Christmas is all about. What's up, you guys? Welcome back for another day of Vlogmas. Um, I am. Wow, I have so many thoughts to share with you guys for today's video. I'm trying to get a little scenery going here. Wait a minute, hold on. Okay, okay, this is cute. <laughs> okay, you guys, so first of all, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Gabrielle. I also go by Gaby. Here on the channel, we are Miss GCH, and we're doing Vlogmas. I believe this is Vlogmas Day. I don't know, I'm pre-recording this because I'm going home this weekend, so I have no idea, but happy Vlogmas. I am coming on because this is another subject that um, I was asked about when I pulled you guys on Instagram about what kind of things you want check-ins and updates about for Vlogmas. This was one that came up actually twice. So, I am coming on to give you an update, and that is about my experience with finding a church home. Um, if you've been following for a while, you remember I had two videos, I believe, on my experience and um, just journey, I guess, with finding a church home. Um, so honestly, those two videos will give you the most context for the conversation today, and I don't know how much of it I'm going to cover in detail. Like, if you only listen to this video, you might hear holes in the story, they'd be like, mm -hmm. So don't jump in the comments with no trash talk or no crazy talk unless you have watched both of those videos. I will link them so that uh, you can go watch those if you're that invested and then come back and hear the update, the 2021 update. Um, Cause the first video I posted, I believe was like the end of 2018 maybe. Yeah, I think it was like end of 2018 or early 2019 where I came on and shared with you all that um, I was stepping back from church. And I know this sounds crazy. Honestly, it was even crazy for me. As a church kid, someone who was raised in the church, I mean, I was in the church before I was born. You feel what I'm saying? Like, I lived in the church growing up. Like, church folk were my family, friends, aunts, uncles, everybody. Like, I grew up in church. Um, and I just didn't know a life without church, like, every week. Um, if not every day of the week. So, it was weird to come to that conclusion, but... Um, really where it came from was just a place of like frustration and exhaustion i think even i'm trying to think of the timing of it because i had just moved to columbus so i had a church um that i attended regularly when i lived in chicago and i would say that was really my first like church um well can i say church home so since leaving the church that i grew up in when i was in high school um and then obviously going straight off into college um, there was a lot of, first of all, pain around the situation of me leaving the church that I grew up in. A lot of pain, a lot of church hurt. Um, some might even say church trauma when you hear like all of the fallout um, that happened from that situation in my life, my family's lives. And so it was just, it was a mess. And it didn't um, draw me away from Christ, but it did um, just taint my view of like, church folk and I am a church folk so you know I'm not saying it like y'all over there like I get it I am in the body of Christ we are all human it's more so like the the profile of like your church folk who are all about the talk and all about the you know look of it but when it comes to the walking it out and loving your neighbor like God actually said just missing the mark on that one and so my view was really tainted of church community, which was hard. I mean, I had only known a life of church community. So it was a very weird experience. And so then going off to college, obviously it's all I knew was to have a church home and a church family. So I, I went after that. The church homes that I found in college were not homes, right? They were places that I was going. I enjoyed the word there. I enjoyed the worship there. Um, I had multiple, you know, just God encounters there. I loved, um, you know, the the feeling and the energy there, but I, I can't say that I was really a part of those places. So when I was in Chicago, I attended Pastor John Hanna's church. If you know him, he is just incredible. It was just, it was everything. It was crazy because the apartment that I found, I had no idea, it was literally right down the street. I don't even remember how I found that church. Cause I do remember visiting a couple churches in Chicago, but then I found there and it was just, it was wraps. I mean, that church is just dynamic, but it is very much, um, I would call it a mini mega church. It is a mega church in the sense of like, 
Pastor John Hanna is known around the nation. He speaks at all the places. He speaks at, you know, T.D. Jakes Church and all that. So it draws a very huge population of black folk that live in Chicago. So it was not the same kind of feel of a church home. Like I grew up in a bigger church um, than like your typical, like, you know, really tight, small church. Um, my church was not like that. It was a little bit bigger. So I was used to finding church community in a space like that. But Pastor John Hannah's church was the biggest church I had ever called a church home. So it was like, Okay, um, so really other than the, the sores that I went to church with, I didn't really have church community there. I did not recognize people there. There were not people who knew my name and face there. Like it was not that kind of a gig. Um, I did go through the new members class there um, to get involved because at the time when I was doing all that, I thought I was gonna be living in Chicago for an extended period of time. If y'all know my story, come to find out I really only lived in Chicago for that one year. So, you know. Take that as you may but i did do the new member class um graduated from that and um was really starting to get to the point where i was about to get involved in the church before i made the decision to move and transfer to ohio to columbus um in ohio state so again i was so grateful for new life i needed a, a church home like that i had so many god encounters there like my gosh and i was very sad to leave new life because I, like i told you i was ready to start really getting involved i had done the new members class which you have to do before you can get involved so i was ready i was ready <laughs> but then i transferred so then i come to columbus and i'm like okay you know starting over on trying to find a church but that's fine like it can't be that hard right Y'all, that church search in Columbus about took your girl out. I was so done with looking for a church. I was exhausted. <laughs> I was exhausted. And like I said, go back and watch the other videos because I really explained, like, I wasn't shopping for a church, right? Like, there were some real fundamental concerns I had about each of the places that I found. And there was actually one church that I did um, go to for an extended period of time when I first came to Columbus. But... There was just, there was mess and I couldn't fully, I couldn't fully engage and I, I just couldn't stay. It got to a point where it's like, I cannot stay here. I just, I was deflated when I, when I made that decision. I'm not going to lie. I was, I was deflated. I did have a couple friends who were also looking and so we would kind of just literally pick a new church every Sunday to visit. And man, I don't know if that sounds fun to some of y'all, but let me tell you, it's not. It is not. Like, literally every Sunday, hoping I go into a place that is safe, okay? Like, spiritually, if you know what I mean. But definitely in today's age, like, I can't just go in there with my guard down and just consuming whatever happens on the stage. Like, no, you really have to listen even more intently, I think. It's my personal experience. Um, just because you don't know if you can trust whatever's about to come across the pulpit. Like, it's just true. So it was a very exhausting experience. It was very deflating. I, I think I started off being kind of excited. Like, okay, it's fine. Like, I'm going to find a church. But then by the end of that time period where I decided I'm not doing this no more, I was, I was just, I was done. I just, I was tired of the whole looking and being disappointed. And so I really turned to my prayer wall and put on there like, Lord, I wrote out what I really believe would be true about the church that God was calling me to. And I was like, Lord, I need a church home. Like I just, I need a church home. And so at that point I made another video letting you all know um, about my decision to stop attending church. And I knew I was being fed in the best ways um sorry my heat just came on <laughs> so if you hear that in the background my bad but i was being fed in really positive and fulfilling ways through those online pastors i really was attending transformation church like it was my church just online i was paying my tithes there because i didn't have anywhere else to pay them to so i was like i'm just gonna invest in that right now and pray and just ask that the Lord leads me to a church home. In September of 2019, I, through a friend, stumbled upon one church in Gehenna, Ohio. Hadn't attended a church for quite some time by that point. I had pretty much given up, but she was going, I trusted her. I hadn't heard of it, which shocked me. I felt like I had gone to every church in Columbus. So when she said it and I didn't recognize it, I was like, what? Um, and so I went with her, totally a fluke, y'all. I talk about that in the other video um, as well. So ended up going and y'all had an 
amazing experience. Like literally between the first time I went and I think the second time, I went back through like the list of things that I said I wanted in a church home and literally everything, just check, 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 check. It was like, wait a minute, what? Where, how, this place has been sitting over here this whole time and I had no idea. So I was sold um, and after attending for about three months and just being encouraged and you know, getting back into a church community I started pursuing getting in ministry because I told y'all that's when I almost got missing in the beginning was even with all my previous churches I had never been in ministry and I grew up being in ministry multiple ministries always in ministry like my parents were in ministry like leaders in ministry so that's all I knew so I was, I was eager to get back into it and so that's what I did I you know went through like the welcome to one church the new member stuff I met with um, a leader and um got hooked in and so i started serving in a children's ministry and man i just like every experience i just i would leave every sunday feeling so full like i would be looking for a wednesday night service which they didn't have i would just be looking for other ways to get involved and be at the church because i felt it was like a healing balm like every time i walked in it was just like the word was so intentional and so like right on for what I needed. Um, the people were so authentic and genuinely like happy to see you, happy to connect with you. And then COVID happened literally that March. Um, and I had just started, I think serving at the end of January. So I was still pretty fresh in serving when the church shut down, obviously everything shut down and everything went online. And so that was really sad because I was just, I felt like I was in this momentum and then it just halted, right? And then you all know, I out the blue made the decision in April to um, move <laughs> to Virginia for a year for my internship. That was literally, it was crazy. Um, but I did, I moved and I would watch online. One of the ladies that I worked with in the check-in would be so intentional every month. It used to blow my mind, like to the point of tears, that every month, at the least, sometimes it was more than every month, she would text me and just say, I'm praying for you, how can I pray for you? She would check on me every month. And that lady had only met me a couple of times working with um, the kids checking at one church. But she like, when I tell you was the, ah, uh, you know how you feel the cry from here? Or is that just me? I'm not gonna cry on here. Um, but she was the church community that I was used to having, that I hadn't had in years. Um, and I don't know what provoked her to do that other than the Holy Spirit, right? Like that was God saying to do this and to show me that I had church community, that I had found it, you know? And then obviously made the decision to move back once I got the job and I knew like as soon as I, I couldn't get back fast enough to go back to one church because by this point the churches are open again. I was ready, I'm like, I'm trying to get back to one church. So. Couple weeks into me um, being back um, and settled in, I attended uh, one church for the first time in over a year. And every feeling I had when I first found it, I had again when I came back and um, immediately got plugged back into working with the kids ministry. But I was okay with just that, right? Like. What I had prayed for had technically been answered, generally speaking, and I was uh, that was enough for me. I was, thank you, Jesus. I have my church home in one church, I'm in ministry, and that's that. And God was like, but sis, that's only the beginning. Let me show you a little bit more. And y'all, the Lord blew my mind very quickly. Like, in September, um, I shared about this on Instagram, so if you follow me there, you've already seen this story, but... In September, my dad's testimony got back to um, Pastor Greg. Actually, my dad got a chance to tell him directly um, how, you know, watching one church online, because I shared, you know, once I found my church, I shared it with my family and they would watch online. And while my dad was in the hospital, he would watch my pastor and just be so encouraged by my pastor. And so when we came, 
um, my parents finally were able to come with me to church um, a couple weeks into me um, being back. And my parents knew, like, they were like, oh, we going to meet Pastor Greg. <laughs> like, we're, we're going to meet Pastor Greg. And so as soon as church let out, my dad went up to him and introduced himself and just, you know, shared how his ministry had impacted his life. And how he would, you know, watch while he was in the hospital and how he's now cancer free. And, you know, Pastor was just so moved by his story and actually crazy, crazy story um briefly but the pastor of this church his father is actually somebody that i knew growing up he used to come to um, my childhood church and preach and he was friends with my parents already so it was like the fact that i'm in your son's church right like how does that happen how does how does that happen other than the holy spirit that i get led to this church in the way that I did, like just crazy. So we had that connection that my dad was making, you know, we know your dad and da 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 da. So all of that happened. And then um, we have this uh, event every year called One Big Party where we, um, it's just a huge party for Jesus, essentially. So many amazing things happened that weekend. Um, but part of the sermon, my pastor reached out to my dad and asked if he could share his testimony about cancer and um him being cancer free and so i'm gonna put a little clip in here of that i want to i want to show you a story of, of a man in our church named james hicks james is part of our online campus he and his family live in akron ohio and throughout the course of 2020 into 2021 they went through their own inner dungeon they went through their own you know feed and stocks they went through a dark place and i want to show you what Act 16 looks like today when somebody's willing to take a prison and turn it into a party. Check this out. Tell me a little bit about 2020. You know, I was working at Bridgestone Americas and I had been there for over 45 years. And I find out that I was gonna get laid off. At that point, and I didn't know what to think, but yet I was in a situation where I could do nothing but trust God. I got laid off for three months, come up to July, you know, back working, my, my stomach, basically started hurting. They had run a number of tests on me. I had a blockage in my bile duct, uh, which was connected to my gallbladder. But then they also came back to me and said, the MRI showed also you have a mass on the head of your pancreas. They indicated that they wanted to go ahead, have major surgery to remove the mass off of my pancreas. They had found cancerous cells. I was scheduled to take wow. six months of chemotherapy. What months were this from what month? To from one? October of 2020 to April of 2021. What was that like? Oh, uh, that pastor, let me tell you, it was no fun. I'm having these poisonous chemicals pumped into my system to kill a, a disease that's inside of me. And then what kind of threw a curveball into the situation is that Christmas Eve, my whole family comes down with COVID. You had pancreatic cancer and COVID yeah. simultaneously while you're doing on and off chemotherapy. Yes, sir. When someone's complaining about they didn't get their Charmin extra soft uh, toilet paper because they ran out at Kroger. And there it is. You want to tell them about pancreatic cancer and COVID. And COVID. One's major and the other one is just as major. So, you know, ain't no major minor. It's like, you know, it's a double whack. I turned on uh, YouTube connected and everything, and there you are. And I said, well, okay, we will go ahead and listen. And let me tell you from my heart, as far as my recovery for what I was going through in terms of my treatment and everything else, God has used you in a very marvelous way to uh, speak to my heart, to speak to my wife, through even the worship team being ushered in before God speaks to our hearts we continue to watch and you know and i'm at home on treatment and you would say stand up we'd stand up at home and i mean we were praising god in our living room after i finished up my chemotherapy then i ended up having a ct scan done the ct scan itself uh shows that there is no cancer <laughs> Three months later, which just went by here not too long ago, I ended up having another CT scan and same result, no cancer. <laughs> Come on, Jesus! Oh, thank you, Lord. It's amazing to have a CT scan that's clean, but it's amazing to turn a hospital room into a holy place. 
That's amazing. crazy you guys like how does that happen I don't I don't know I don't know I just while it was happening like you can literally hear me sobbing in the back like while the video is playing at church because it was just like this really is my church home and like my pastor knows my name knows my family like heard my dad's testimony of him watching back when like no one ever knew we were watching or even a part of the church it's now up here we're celebrating i'm praising god on behalf of my dad's healing with my church what like just it just means so much more thinking about my journey to that moment like just never could have called it. Never could have, never would have thought. So then fast forward and all of these people have been coming to the church that I know. Um, it, it, we've been having these like, you go here, what? You go to one church moments? Like, so that's amazing. Cause it's like my community there has gone from zero to a hundred, like in a matter of a couple months. Like literally I feel, I don't just feel like I found a place and you know I'm in ministry but I also feel like I'm going to see my family you know I'm going to see my friends um and some of those relationships are still new and budding but I just I feel so they just feel so authentic and genuine and like God is going to use these relationships for even greater growth even greater blessing and then because um my pastor's dad knows my mom growing up she was the choir director music director creative arts director at our church for literally 30 years and so he knew her from that time and from all this like directing 100 people choirs and worship teams and all that kind of stuff so he put the bug in my pastor's ear of like who my mom was and so of course by default which is not of course because I was just minding my own business but they came to me like so how is it your mom is this musical and you're not we don't believe it okay we think you've been hiding some musical skills some some singing skills and we don't know what it's gonna take for you to get out of that but here's the link to the audition for one church music which is our church's worship team and i was like oh oh when i first came to the church i did tell the leader at that time that like you know i grew up singing i've done all of that but I, I just wanna work with the kids. I think I just wanna work with the kids, especially for now. Maybe if I'm supposed to do that in the future, God will make the way. Fast forward two years, and here we are while I'm minding my business and folk coming up to me like, so you see, here's the audition. So I sat with it for a minute and was like, you know what, maybe the timing is intentional. Maybe this is the time when I'm supposed to do this. And so I auditioned. I haven't sang formally, like in a very like, you know rehearsal choir ensemble type way since high school so i just i felt like i was out of my element because i'm like i haven't used these skills in so long but i auditioned um we had to do a video audition and then an in-person audition and one thing led to another next thing i knew i was on the schedule and singing for worship <laughs> so um actually a couple weeks before singing for worship i also got to do a lot of recording and things for our um, christmas production which stay tuned i'm not going to get in depth about that but the video for that goes live on christmas day so i'll make sure that you all have access to the link if you want to check it out but yeah this past weekend thanksgiving holiday weekend i was on the schedule for the first time so i got to be on stage um as a part of the worship team leading the church for four services one on saturday three on sunday into worship um for church and i just i it 
surreal, I guess is the word, um, unbelievable. Even my inclusion in the Christmas production still to this moment does not make sense that I was included, that I was asked to do some special things. Like, why? Why me, Lord? And why this timing? I have no idea. It, it's a blessing and I'm just literally rolling with it like, okay, Lord, what the heck else are you about to do? Because, wow. I'm just, I feel like it's that, uh, I feel like it's that reel or that TikTok where, um, it, oh, what is the voice? I'm going to put it in here. I'm going to look for it because I'm going to mess it up. My hand. Now we wait. We wait for that. Person. Now, now, now we go. Keep holding my hand. Keep holding my hand. That is how I feel. Since <laughs> being reconnected to one church. That is how I feel. It's like, the Lord was like, oh, you want a church home? Bet. Okay, bet. But I do want to point out that there was a waiting period. There was a journey and I really feel like the journey was intentional that God had a, a purpose for that journey to even just make my heart tender to people who don't feel connected to church and who don't have a church home and are looking for a place for healing and comfort and family and connection. Like I just, I have a new lens and a new perspective that I didn't have as a church kid. Like I was born into it. You know what I'm saying? Like it just, I didn't really have to work for it because of how much people love my parents and the ministry and the precedent that they set. I had church family. I had a church home. And so this journey, I never would have experienced without all of the things that led me to this moment. And granted, some of those things that led to this were painful and hard and difficult, but all part of the plan. And honestly, even back thinking back to the moment where I put the prayer for a church home on my prayer wall, because I was just so frustrated and tired of looking. I think back to how that was literally two, two and a half, years ago almost three years ago that i put that and i'm just now in that moment of having found the place having all these opportunities really getting connected really having church family and i'm still only just tapping into it like i still have no idea everything that god is going to do through my time here with one church and through this community and being a part of it i just i don't know like it's pretty much like, Lord, have your way at this point. Because <laughs> this is crazy, and it is such a blessing, and I'm so grateful. Like, that is the least bit of it. To have a pastor that knows my name, to have a pastor that I can interact with, to have leaders in the church who know my name, who reach out to me, who, who invite me in and call me in, unmatched so yes that is the update about church yes i have a church home yes i am so blessed yes i'm on the worship team <laughs> yes i'm in ministry and just loving it like that is literally an understatement i love it and if you are anywhere in columbus near columbus and need a church home one church in Gahanna, ohio is the place to be i promise you i am so confident just epically confident that if you are looking for a church home in a church community and you don't have one and you're in the area you will find it there if you are nearby and ever come by make sure to let me know that you're gonna be there i am there pretty much every service every weekend because i just can't get enough so you will probably run into me so make sure you come and say hi and if you need information all that let me know i talked really long i'm probably gonna have to cut this way down maybe but i hope you enjoyed this update about um, my church experience and being a millennial who left church for a period of time and then found their way back and it's been so much more than i ever imagined i hope you guys have been enjoying this so far um i really have these updates are so long time coming so this is just it feels really good to share with you guys and to bring you in on this journey so yeah i love you guys and i will see you tomorrow for vlogmas day seven bye